very happy to be here to share my story um, with you. I'm going to speak on the, the woman gig. I'm not sure if Regina is a gig. Does she look like one? <laughs> and do I look like a gig? No. No. Technology is a very exciting world. And I'm surprised that many of us shy away from it. And we don't want to get involved. We assume that it is for the gig, it is for the complex, it's for those who don't want to have fun, those who don't have a life. If you didn't drink water from the stream that's flowing behind your house, then you definitely use technology to get some water through your tap. And actually, you even drove here in a piece of technology. You have your phones, don't you? You are WhatsApping, you're sending emails. Technology is actually part of your life. I have a baby who is one year old. I sterilize his bottles, his spoons, his cups. I use technology to do that. I warm my food. I use technology to do that with a microwave. So it is part of your life. Why are we running away from it? Why are we having the challenges? But I want you to agree with me first, whether you think technology rocks or not. It is not about boots and overalls alone. Sometimes it's about high heels. It's about dresses. We have moved on from the complex, hardcore technology into something that is brainy, that is funky, and that is nice. And I want to encourage you to look beyond what you knew in the past about technology. It's now a woman's world. It is not for the men only. It looks like it's a male-dominated area, and it is true, but we should not shy away from it as women because we have the capacity to be able to do it. I am a wife, I am a mother, three boys. I have an electrical engineering degree, and I've been in the telecom industry for 17 years, seven of which I've been technology director in two telecom companies. I'm currently probably on my third passport. I travel the world, but I have fun. I get my hair done. I get my nails done. I think that it is, it is something that you should aspire to want to get into. There's a lady sitting right in front of me. If you read her profile, Miss Ivaloko, you would see She's been in that world, satellite. And when I hear about it, I go, oh my God. And when I think I'm in that field, somebody else is doing even more. Listen to Regina's story. So why are we having challenges getting women into it? Let me give you some statistics. If you think about the fact that there are 50% of women in Ghana and even in Africa, it's only 15% who are in the ICT workforce. Only 15% are in the workforce. But women make 50% of the purchasing decisions in your house are made by the woman. So why aren't women shipping the technology that we need in our homes? We decide the phones our children use. We decide the things, we, the type of micro, if you go to a shop with your husband to pick a microwave, tell me who will make that choice. The many, even the television in your house, unless you don't want, you want to go into the controversies, but your wife will have to be part of that decision making. So why are we shying away from being part of the formation of the technology? The apps that we want to use to advance our lives. Believe me, we have to influence it. And I'm encouraging all of you to step out of the problems. I've listed a few that we have there today. In our culture, we're raised to think that it is for the male. And it is male dominated. So even when we force ourselves to start on the career, because we're brilliant in school, we read science and maths, it's automatic. By the time you are getting into final year and even your national service, you want to quickly check in out because you want something flexible and exhaustive, something that is not tiring. Why are you checking in out? When you have been able to get that degree, I've mentored a lot of ladies who come and say, Patricia, I know I have that degree, but I think I want to go and do something else. Why do you want to go and do something else? This is it. This is the real thing that is changing the world. And you have to be part of that dream. If you think about the fact that 
yes, it's a lonely world out there because we have very few women who are in that state. A lot of my mentors are male. A lot of the mentors I have are male professors. Why? It's because I can't find many women who will take me into that state, who will help me to go into the next state. As I'm standing here, I am not satisfied. I am not satisfied at all. I feel that there's more I have to do, but who do I speak to? So I have to look for another male to speak. So some of us have to build that community to support the women, to support young, growing girls who want to go into this industry. It is unique, it is exciting, it pays well. How much more can I say to sell this to you? <laughs> so how do we turn this around? We need to be bold. Encourage your sisters who want to go and read science and maths. My best subjects were physics, chemistry, maths, and statistics. I hated biology because I didn't like to read. So I like the calculations. And if the person has the passion, I was never the first person in my class. I was not the A++ student. I just had the love. I just had the passion. And that's how come I succeeded. Encourage the young ladies who want to go and do it. And then when they come to look for jobs with you, give them the opportunity. Take a risk. When my first company decided to make me a technology officer, I was going to be the first African young girl at 29 to be given that opportunity across 16 operations. When I moved to Vodafone, I was going to be the first black girl across 23 markets, and Vodafone is not a small brand, to be given that opportunity to run the whole of their network, and it is not a small network. But somebody must be willing to take a risk on you. And I'm encouraging the employers who are here to be willing to take the risk on these young girls and give them the opportunity because I am a testament to that. And the ladies themselves, look, when I started my work, I have wired rooms, I have fixed electrical bulbs, I have been trained by riggers and electricians, irrespective of my degree, because I had to learn from the mill. These were the people who guided me and taught me, but because I had been to school, I had received a higher education. I was able to put meaning to what they were teaching me, and I was able to rise above it and become their boss. I traveled from the south to the north. I've been to Sierra Leone to work. I've been to Rwanda. I've been to many countries. It comes to suck. I've missed my children's birthday sometimes. I've had problems in my house sometimes. Of course, I have a very supportive husband, so he covers me up most of the time. But it is not easy. I'm not going to stand here and pretend to you that it is, it, is, it is easy and it comes with very little challenge. It comes with a lot of sacrifice. But if you want to get there, you have to be willing, willing to make the sacrifice. And the third advice I will give for women who want to rise in this field, take advantage of the external support. Look. When I decided to change jobs, one of the things I, I did was to move houses and have an in-house nanny. It was going to be expensive, but it was a sacrifice I had to make. My children go to my mother-in-law's house, sometimes without having a bath, and she has to give them that bath. That you need to take advantage of the external support. If you were outside the country, you have to pay so much to get it. Sometimes when I close late, my mother-in-law will come to my house and spend the night there and take care of my kids. If I travel, she'll come over. But I'm not going to be petty and still be able to make it in the career. You have to make some sacrifice. You have to let go and allow some people to help. And my last advice is you need to learn to open up and acquire new knowledge. We have good phones, good tablets around. If you have some time on your hands, I'm always on Google or any of the search engines because I don't have time to read big books. So if I, find, if I hear one word, something about finance, something about marketing, which is my condition, something about marketing, something that I don't understand, I'm always building on my knowledge. Because as I told you, I do not believe that the city is my end. I think there's more that I can do. So I will encourage all the ladies here, all the gentlemen here, these are inspirational ladies that you can follow their story. They have done it. I can't see any reason. And if you read about them, they went through parts, but they made sacrifices. 
and today they are there. So I'm encouraging all of you to open up about technology. It pays, it's exciting, and it makes a difference to the world. Thank you.